If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. All right, we're back with another uh, premium Jewel Knight deck profile. I'm Richard, and we got some uh, decent support from Volume Collection 5, I believe we're on right now. So the deck is pretty much mostly the same, um, but the new support does make it a little bit more consistent, which is really fun. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the deck profile. Starting off with our starter, which is Glime. So you know, on ride, draw a card, and you get a quick shield if your opponent's at grade one, so that is cool. Now we're gonna jump right into our grade three, starting off with four copies of Salome. This is the card that you're basically gonna be copying from Crystal Luster. What it does is, at the end of the battle of attacks, you counter blast one, you uh, call cards onto occupied rearguard circles, so obviously you can't call to open circles. Um, then if you called at least three jewel knights, you can soul blast four to restand your vanguard. It keeps all its drive checks, which is really cool. The second skill is van or rear. Whenever a unit's placed on top of this, you can counter blast to give it 10k to drive. That still works for G units, so you can stride on top of her. A unit is still being placed. Uh, striding is still placing, so you can counter blast to give the G unit a 10k and a drive check, an extra drive. So you do that, and then you use Crystal Luster's skill to copy her skill. So then you can do the whole swing with quad drive, call things, then Soul Blast 4, Restand, Swing again with Quad Drive. So, really, really cool card. So a lot of lot of attacks. And then on top of that, Crystal Luster's GB3. They have to guard three at a time. So it's, it's just the kill. All right, more grade 3s. This is a really great card as a support card. Ashley. Ashley is at the end of the battle attacks, fan rear, Soul Blast 2. You search for a grade 2 or less Jewel Knight. Call it. And if it, this is on the Vanguard Circle, you can call two Grade 2 or less Jewel Knights, so you can get multi-attacking out of it. Whenever the unit's placed on top of her, you can kind of blast for a crit. So she works on rear, she works great on van, you can copy her Crystal Luster too. Uh, she just extends your attacks, so even more attacking on top of the solid bullshit. Alright, time for the most expensive base rarity card in the game. Uh, Jewel Knight Sword Me. Dude, nice PS5. Thanks. <laughs> um, when it's placed, you kind of blast a Jewel Knight. You can search your deck for any grade one, uh, grade one or less Jewel Knight. Call it. it. It's just a free plus. So that you never just never reprint it. Never. They'll never reprint it. It'll never go away. This is the one and only copy. Uh, please, Bushy Road, please retrain this card and, and make it better so that this card becomes obsolete. But this is pretty much a staple in the premium deck. If you really want to build this and you don't want to shell out the Sword Mies, you can just bump up. The, the other Jewel Knights, uh, instead of running this, that's perfectly fine. So, but if you can, get the Sword Mies. Uh, we're running three copies, so this is a new card. Uh, Miranda, we're running her mostly for the counter charge, but her first skill is when it attacks, you can counter blast to match this, the current power of your Vanguard, which is cool. It's mostly Ashley reverse support, but it, nah. The second skill is when you, when you play something on top of her, you can counter charge and soul charge. You mostly use it for the counter charge because it's the only counter charge engine in the whole deck. And you're constantly calling on top of things, so it, it works out. But I really like the counter charge in this deck, so that's why I'm running it at three. Then we're doing Sybil at three. Uh, Sybil is just a really good right target. It also fills the soul the easiest, surprisingly, because it's on swing. Put a great two or less from hand into soul, then draw a card so you're breaking even, but you gain soul. Other skills when something's placed on top of her, you go to top three, call a grade two or less jewel knight from among them, the rest go to bottom, so it rebuilds your board too. So this is a great card as well. And then lastly for grade twos, this is our beat stick. Uh, Lily, when something's placed on top of her, that thing placed on top gets 10k, and then when she swings, you put two things from drop, normal units, back to the bottom, you soul charge one, she gets 5k, so it helps refill the deck, helps you get soul, it's a 15k beater, and anything placed on top of this gets 10k, so it's still a good target. So that's it for grade twos. On to another new card. I love this card, so that's why I'm running it at four. Uh, Alwain, what she does is rear guard circle, you just rest her. You put a normal unit from your drop back to the bottom. You soul charge one, pick your jewel knight vanguard, give it 5k. The 5k doesn't matter. It's the fact that you can just rest her and gain soul. So if you're one soul away from the uh, Salom skill, you can just rest and boom, soul charge. The other skill is when something's placed on top of her, you look at the top two cards of your deck, grab a jewel knight, reveal it, put it in your hand, the rest goes to the bottom. So this helps you filter 
for Salome's skill because you want to call Jewel Knights at the end of her battle, so you call on top of her, you can filter for them. Uh, and then you rest her and you call on top of her and you break even basically. So this is a great card, great search target. Uh, it works when you ride her too, so you can ride her, ride, or when you ride on top of it, look at top two, grab a Jewel Knight. Rest of grade ones, Eunice. Uh, Eunice is at the end of the battle that boosts, you soul charge one, put a normal unit to the bottom of your deck, bounce it back to hand, so it puts cards back in your hand, which is nice. Uh, the other skill is when it's something's placed on top of it, pick a unit in the same column on your opponent's board, retire it. If you couldn't retire anything, you draw a card instead, so it's a good ride. It's good to get rid of annoying back row stuff, uh, and it helps you fill some bounces back to your hand, so it's just a really good card in general. Then we have uh, Morbidus. AK, it's Morvin time. Uh, <laughs> Rickard skill kind of blast. Put a normal unit from drop back to bottom, soul charge one. It, it's a worse um, Alwain, arguably, but I do like the fact that if you play something on top of her, you get to draw a card, so you break even. It's also a Jewel Knight. The whole deck needs to run Jewel Knight, so it's kind of like, at the end of the day, it's what you're going to run. I am running just the one copy of Christine because I feel like running anymore is kind of redundant. You do the skill once, it's the only time you're going to do it the whole game, and every Jewel Knight in the whole deck is searchable. So it's kind of plus one, you reveal a grade three. If you have three other Jewel, Jewel Knight rear guards, you can search your deck for a three, call it, and at the end of the turn, you bounce the grade three back to hand, and then you discard a card. So it helps you get stride fodder. It searches Ashley for you because that's the rear guard you're going to choose every single time because Ashley gives you another attack. Um, but I feel like at the end of the day, it's not really needed, and I feel like the extra kind of blast could go to something like uh, Sword Me or Salome Skill or an extra drive. It's like, at the end of the day, eh, it, it's decent. It's a good tech. And we're doing triggers. Everyone's favorite controversial trigger, the over trigger. Um, this one is, it gives all your rear guards additional drive checks. You're calling grade three rear guards, so you get twin drive off of those, which is nice. And over triggers are fair and balanced, so that's why we run them. Uh, heal guardians. <laughs> heal guardians, um, it's a grade three and it's a heal trigger, so uh, stride fodder, G guardian fodder, and it has that really cool thing where if you haven't ridden to grade three yet, you can give your vanguard 10k for the turn or reduce the crit by negative two for a battle. And you can induce yourself damage if you have no damage, so heal guardians are kind of what you have to run in premium. Uh, the jewel knight ones are bad. <laughs> PGs, because PGs are good. Um, if you want, instead of running all flash shield assaults, you can just kind of like drop this down to three and run the flashing jewel knight assault if you just want another jewel knight in your deck. Um, and you feel like the draws are a little excessive, but it doesn't really matter that much at the end of the day. So I like my four draws. And it's kind of funny, it still kind of matches the aesthetic because it's still Isolt, just like in the old days. Uh, we're running three of the Jewel Knight crit because this one lets you draw stuff, but most importantly, Sword Me requires you to counterblast specifically Jewel Knight cards. So anytime you put a trigger in your damage zone, Nine times out of ten, you can't use it for Sword Me, so um, it's good to have Jewel Knight triggers. This one's just really good because what it does is at the end of your turn, if you have three other rear guards of Jewel Knight in its name and you have a Vanguard of Jewel Knight, you draw a card, you put this back in the deck, and you shuffle. So you get a trigger back in deck, you, sh you get to draw a card, and you have to call Jewel Knights anyways with Salome skill, so calling down a trigger doesn't feel nearly as bad if you know it's going back in the deck and you get to draw out of it anyways. So I, I like I like this a lot. Lastly, stride fodder crit because striding is how you win games. Yeah, so Crystal Luster Dragon unfortunately is the only way to play Royal Paladin in 2022. Um, I play four copies because I like to splurge. So what Crystal Luster does is you can flip any card in your G-Zone face up to copy your heart skill. So we're going to copy Salome 90% of the time. The GB3 is what makes this card super broken. It's if you have three or more grade two or greater units on your board, your opponent has to guard with three at a time. Uh, that includes your Vanguard as a unit. So you just need a grade, three, a grade two or greater set in your front row for the whole turn and your opponent has to guard three at a time every single battle. Uh, this also restands thanks to Salome, so that's another attack that you're gonna have to force your opponent to guard three at a time. So Crystal Luster is pretty much how you win the game. Uh, fun little tech cards are running Saint Twin Sword. Uh, what this does is when it's boosted, you counterblast one, search your deck for two grade twos, call them, 
anything, the second skill is anything called from deck gets 5k for every face of card in your G zone. So this is also another good finisher. Um, also mostly flip fodder for Crystal Luster. This is uh, a glo a li a Yulo Glogius. Uh, when it attacks, no, you kind of last one. Right uh, you choose, you draw yeah, equal to the number of the rear guards here. that you have, and then you call equal to the same number of cards you drew. Then after you call, if you have five rear guards, you kind of you don't have to pay cost. You gain a force marker. So because all the jewel knights gain effects when you call on top of them, this card has a lot of benefit from that, which is nice. But it's a really good first stride because you get your first force marker, you stride into this, you make a board after it attacks, you get another force marker. So you're getting two for you're getting two markers immediately, which is really nice. And then you can go into your kill turn with Crystal Lester. Uh, I have two. One's flip fodder. That's the answer. <laughs> Uh, I, sometimes I like to do two for fun, but it usually doesn't happen. Uh, one copy of Agnos. This is because um, Agnos is one of those cards that also you just have to call your whole hand, no matter if you're calling on top of units or not. So you can a one, soul bless one. You call your hand to as much as you possibly can. So if you have seven cards in hand, you just have to dump it everywhere you can. Then you draw three cards. So because you're calling on top of stuff, you can benefit from all the Jewel Knight effects. What this also does is when it's face up in the G zone, you do not have to pay the cost for stride, but you can't flip it for cost, so you just have to stride into it. You also have to discard a card of the same name as your Vanguard, kind of like a, uh, a Zeroff Dragon. Uh, I have it teched in because it has a lot of benefit with the Jewel Knights calling on top of each other and free stride. So, yep. And there's space in the G zone, honestly. Sabreeze, uh, in case your opponent tries to do that thing where like uh, they choose not to ride to grade three. So just always remember that you can use it during main phase. That too. It we is a, a main it is a channel. main phase skill as well. So you can set up your whole board and then go and then go into Sabreeze, which is really nice. Um, also flip water mostly, but it's there just in case your opponent tries to grade stall you. Maskell, in terms of Royal Paladin G Guardians that aren't like specific to Alt Mile and Blasters. This is sadly the best generic Royal Paladin G Guardian. What it does is you flip a G Guardian face up and it gets 10k if you have a front row rear guard. It's that sad. But it's decent and it helps you flip stuff face up in your G zone for Saint Twin Sword, so we run two. Uh, two copies of the new G Guardian from Premium Collection. What it does is when it's placed on the guard circle, you choose a grade two in your front row, or just a grade two. It gets plus 10k shield, so you can intercept with it afterwards. And then the skill given to the grade two is when this unit intercepts, you can counter blast, soul blast, and it becomes a PG. I feel like that's a waste of cost, but it's a decent skill if you aren't, if you need to PG urgently. So it's nice to have. Uh, then we run Dismal, mostly because space, but also Dismal is a really good card. Uh, when it's placed on the guard circle, you pick a unit, it cannot be attacked or can't be hit and it can't be retired and it has resist. It just basically protects whatever you want the minute you put it down. So if your opponent's trying to bully your rear guard, you can just be like, no. And then lastly, Ratcomb, uh, filtering is good. When it's placed on the guard circle, you discard a card, then draw a card. So if you have a hand that's full of non-jewel knights, you can discard a non-jewel knight, draw a card, and hope for the best. So, yeah, we just like to have our options. That was pretty much it for the deck. Not much has changed aside from the fact that we're now running the Grade 1 and the Grade 2 from uh, the new Clan Collection, but they help a lot. They're really, really good. So, like I said, if you really don't want to shell out for the, uh, the Sword Mies, you can just run more copies of the other uh, Grade 2s. So I'm running three of each, so you can just kind of count that up. So you can run 12 of those grade twos and then kind of fiddle around with the grade one lineup. Uh, Sword of Me is not a necessity, but it's a nice addition to abuse. So I feel like this can be a fun little casual deck, but uh, Crystal Luster kind of makes the deck. That was it for the deck profile. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye.